Hello, my name is Scott Davis. Welcome to New World Birth. This is the care and feeding of a New World Age report for the Gregorian date of June 1st, 2016 in one Etznob or Flint in the Mayan Zolkin calendar with the Gemini New Moon, Mercury entering Gemini and Neptune turning retrograde. And June 1st is one Etznob or Flint and it carries the themes of introspection and reflection, sparks of insight, the self-sacrificing healer, the spiritual warrior, the knife that can be used to heal or harm, duality, right or wrong, good or evil, fear or faith, east or west, feasting or fasting, woman or man, us or them, leaders or followers, left or right mindedness. And it reminds me of the story of Chiron, the wounded healer, uh, giving up his immortality so that Prometheus could be freed from his eternal bondage of being chained to a rock and having an eagle devour his liver uh, during the day and then having it regenerate by night, which was his punishment for bringing fire to humans, the spark that comes from Flint. Uh, Flint makes us aware of the illusion of our separateness so that we can transcend duality uh, to uh, realize that our minds uh, tell us that we are this and that, and our hearts tell us that we just are. Uh, boundaries are a construct of the mind. In Lakesh, I am another you. Uh, so as we begin a, a new Gregorian month uh, during this set, I thought I'd discuss the metaphysics of the upcoming month. June is a sixth month, and with the digits of 2016, when we add them together, we get 15. And then when we add the one and the five, that tells us we're in a 15 six month in numerology. Basic numerology reduces numbers to one through nine. So when we think about that arc, the six, rep six represents a time of review after gaining insights during the five month. It's about finding balance by sorting out to determine what we want to keep and what has fulfilled its purpose so it can be released. Uh, these are the qualities that are also shared by the sign of Virgo, which is the current placement where, uh, where Jupiter is. Uh, six months uh, want resolution and harmony. The 15-6 combination is represented by the devil and lovers in the tarot cards, which are about facing our bedevilments, our problems with tenacity and humor to hone ourselves in relationship to the other. Uh, and this quote from Bennett W. Goodspeed represents the devil archetype. The difference between a comedy and a tragedy is that in a comedy, the characters figure out reality in time to do something about it. And this offering from Anais Nin is helpful in understanding uh, the lovers. The value uh, of the personal relationship uh, to all things is that it creates intimacy. And intimacy creates understanding, and understanding creates love. Uh, and those are themes that are also being played out with the planets as Neptune, unconditional love, and Chiron, healing, slowly turn retrograde uh, during uh, June. So June represents a new series of events that shift us in a new direction on many levels, including facing our inner shadow and sharing our light with others. And before we get into the daily energy for one at Snob, all the planets appear to be moving forward from our perspective here on the Earth, with the exception of Mars, Saturn, and Pluto, uh, which appear to be moving retrograde or in reverse motion. Uh, and remember the themes of retrograde planets are about re review of the past, reevaluate, reminisce, and we can see these themes being played out. Mars is the planet of drive and aggression, and it's been, it re began its retrograde in Sagittarius. But uh, Mars is backed into Scorpio, the sign of its traditional rulership on May 27th. And while Mars is retrograde in Scorpio, our ethics, uh, the ethics of our actions are reviewed. And retrograde Mars uh, can cause frustration as our energy to get things done is retarded, uh, which can lead to irritability and aggression. And then we've got retrograde Saturn in Sagittarius. Uh, which delays success until perseverance and patience are learned. Uh, the Sagittarius themes are like travel, education, adventure, expanding our horizons and planning for upcoming experiences. And Saturn brings the details to the grand overview of Sagittarius. Saturn retrograde is a taskmaster that demands that we take responsibility to review our beliefs while it's in Sagittarius. And then uh, Pluto, uh, uh, the uh, planet of transformation through a death rebirth cycle is retrograde. So it's about reviewing our past, 
uh, it's a time of releasing anything from the past that's a burden to our new path. Uh, Pluto represents death completion and in Capricorn it brings the breakdown of structures uh, to bring about transformation. And the big change during the uh, Flint Tracena is that we have uh, Neptune uh, turning retrograde. It's in Pisces. Uh, it's slowing down to a stop as it prepares to turn retrograde on June 13th. And when a planet is stopped, it's said to be at the peak of its power. So Neptune at the peak of its power in its own sign of Pisces uh, during most, uh, 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 at the peak of its power during most of June, uh, is seeking transcendence through spiritual experiences. Uh, this will be a time to use spiritual practices to keep us grounded as we expand our intuition and consciousness. Both Neptune in Pisces, the sign that it rules tend to be dreamy and imaginative and are difficult to do, nail down due to these qualities of illusion and illumination, often without any way to know which is which. Uh, they represent compassion and codependence, selflessness and loss of self, higher purpose and substance abuse uh, in the inspiration to transcend the material world and experience something beyond words and thoughts. Neptune is, will, is in Pisces from 2011 till 2026. Being an outer planet, Neptune is retrograde almost half the year, uh, turning direct on November 19th of this year. Um, retrogrades bring a time to review the past uh, and to turn our perspective inward uh, regarding the themes that they rule. Uh, so during the next five months, Neptune retrograde in Pisces has us moving deeper into our spiritual life or uh, avoiding such experiences. Uh, I think it's important to keep uh, our uh, foundation in the realm of spirit as we experience uh, the, uh, Saturn square Neptune, uh, which began at the end of last year and will be with us uh, throughout 2016, but also peaking in June. Um, and Saturn represents structures, limitation, boundaries, foundations, uh, oppression, reality, the status quo. And then when it's challenged by Neptune, uh, which dissolves uh, at f fogs, casts a veil uh, that obscures, uh, we're moving into time of dissolving structures, unclear foundations, limitations uh, that seem obscure and perhaps uh, uh, no longer present. Um, but it may just be like a, a lurking, uh, like a rock that's below the waves as your boat tries to navigate in the fog. Uh, so, but this could be dreams represented by Neptune becoming real, representing by Saturn through hard work and inspiration. This could also be borders between countries, Saturn uh, disappearing, Neptune, or becoming blurred. Uh, laws and responsibilities, Saturn, become unclear uh, and without compassion for all, Neptune. Infrastructures collapse. So uh, using Neptune retrograde to return to our spiritual roots uh, will be important energy to nurture as we are in the middle of almost two years of challenging Saturn square Neptune uh, alignments, uh, dissolving the foundations that we've, be that we've come to believe are solid. Uh, so finding your own uh, peace uh, in our in finding our own peace and our connection to spirit will be an important quality to cultivate now uh, and for the tumultuous times ahead. Uh, so uh, let's look at the daily vibrational energy for this Tracena. June first is one et snob or Flint unity experience through introspective introspective. Uh, through introspection in the Mayan Soul King uh, calendar. And we have uh, the sun in a square to Neptune. So from our perspective here on the Earth, the sun is forming a 90 degree angle with Neptune, which is bring some low energy to the day, uh, which uh, seems like it, it takes more energy to complete normal tasks. If possible, it might be a day to have a lighter schedule and uh, more time to rest. Uh, some will feel a little beaten down by this transit, so it's not such a good day for, for work that requires courage 
or a great self-confidence. But don't get discouraged. This energy only lasts for a day. I'm not going to be covering the daily lunar activity in these reports other than the new and full moons. Uh, but that information is available on the New World Birth daily Facebook post and also on the blogger New World Birth blog. The second is to Calac or storm duality experience through recognizing the gifts in adversity. June 3rd is three a how or sun uh, taking action through honoring the wisdom and memory of our ancestors. Uh, while we have a Venus forming a square to Neptune. So again, 90 degree angle between Venus and Neptune, uh, which is an alignment between planet octaves. Uh, Venus representing personal love and Neptune representing unconditional and universal love. The romantic imagination is active under this transit, which can lead to unrealistic expectations regarding loved ones. So just please remember your partner is a mere mortal uh, by not holding them to an impossible romantic ideal that no one could or should try to attain. Relationships that are damaged by this transit are not usually based on reality. This is positive for daydreaming that can lead to artistic expression. Overall, uh, we're likely to feel the expansion of compa in compassion and empathy, uh, which uh, benefits activities like meditation, art, music, uh, which may seem uh, 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 transcendent, uh, but it's not such a great day for business on the material plane. Also on the third, we've got the sun opposing Saturn. So from our perspective here on the earth, uh, this is a 180 degree angle between the sun and Saturn, uh, which makes us conscious of the limitations in our life that uh, have been imposed by others or circumstances. Just knowing that this energy uh, is, is affecting us is helpful. Also knowing that it only lasts a day. Uh, this may be a difficult day for communication. Uh, just don't let it drag you down or overwhelm you. This is day about trying to find balance between our needs and with our obligations. Uh, people may uh, not feel effective uh, psychologically, which may make like, uh, communications more difficult as folks may feel a conflict between uh, the, the, the needs of others and self-expression. Uh, so it's important to find balance between uh, your needs and, and your obligations. Neither one is really meant to win over the other. If our obligations win over our self-expression, we feel restlessness and unfulfilled. But if we ignore our duties to others uh, uh, and only do as we choose, we'll experience conflict with others. You know, so compromise is the best avenue for the third. Uh, we also... Uh, it affects us psychologically with feelings of isolation and loneliness. And then also on the third, uh, Venus uh, then opposes Saturn. So uh, it's probably moved along the orbit a little more. They're almost conjunct. So from our perspective here on the Earth, Venus is opposite Saturn. Uh, again, 180 degree angle between Venus and Saturn. Uh, which can bring a sense of conflict between our duties and, and discipline and our desire for socializing and enjoying friendship. Somehow, even if we can get away from our obligations, we can't fully enjoy ourselves. Uh, Saturn can be cool, leaving us feeling lonely even in the presence of those we love and enjoy. Uh, so don't take these feelings too, uh, too seriously. This is really a short-term transit you know, lasting just a couple of days. Uh, relationships will make us aware of aspects of our, our ourselves, uh, which maybe we prefer not to face. And then on the fourth, we have four emish or crocodile, which is about stability uh, through nurturing new beginnings with the Gemini new moon. And new moons are times of new beginnings. And in Gemini, this is about shifting and changing our thinking and communications. Gemini is ruled by Mercury, which uh, turned direct just the last week. Uh, the new moon brings a, a push to implement the course cor correction that we became aware of during Mercury's retrograde period uh, with new ideas, new perspectives, and new information beckoning 
helping us to learn about ourselves and our environment. New moons bring an opportunity to set an intention for manifestation on the following full moon. You want to look at your astrology chart that contains 14 degrees, 53 minutes, Gemini, uh, almost 15 degrees Gemini to consider what area of your life is being activated by this new moon. For me, that would be my 12th house of secrets, sorrows, and self undoing. But also, it's one of the most mystical of all the houses and is linked to psychic powers. So, I would set an intention uh, related to using this energy spiritually. Um, this moon, new moon is tightly conjunct Venus separated by zero degrees 29 minutes it's also challenged by neptune and jupiter and opposed by saturn which is activating the mutable grand cross that is challenging us during this entire report period uh, the moon challenged by neptune can bring a, a illusion as daydreams and fantasies seem more uh, important than reality the moon opposed by saturn can have people feeling lonely and isolated uh, the moon uh, uh, challenged by Jupiter uh, can bring uh, benevolent and generous feelings for those in our immediate environment. And merging with Venus can be cheerful, warm, gregarious, and, and, and wanting to be out and socializing. Uh, and this can be interpreted in many different ways, and of course usually is. Uh, the mutable grand cross with the sun, moon, Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, and Neptune has many people caught up who have planets in the middle degrees of Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and or Pisces. Uh, Neptune can bring a, a mystery that limits Saturn, our progress, Jupiter, and costing us something we value, Venus. On the other hand, the tight conjunction of this lunation with Venus is very positive for this new moon and can bring a blessing into the house of your astrology chart that encompasses the mid degrees of Gemini. Overall, this is a social new moon is focused on birthing new information and communications. Also on the fourth, the uh, sun is in a square to Jupiter. So from our perspective here on the earth, this is a 90 degree angle between the sun and Jupiter, uh, which can be very useful for moving ahead with something you desire as long as you avoid excess and remain disciplined. Uh, many will feel the urge to take on uh, more than they can handle or have the resources to accomplish. Being overly optimistic and exuberant, uh, we may need to be careful about being extravagant. So this is best approached with restraint. This can also create difficulty with others because many will express its influence as arrogance, self-righteousness. Since you're aware of this possibility, you might want to approach uh, those uh, folks by looking for common ground and compassion uh, for their point of view. Also, we have uh, Venus in a square to, to Jupiter. So from our perspective here on Earth, again, another 93 angle between Venus and Jupiter. It's a nice transit. Uh, this is energy of the square is usually agreeable uh, in folks. Uh, uh, feel the, really good. They enjoy social interactions. The day it, it is it, it's a great day for doing something you, you enjoy. Not so good for doing something you have to do, as it is low uh, for energy for self discipline. It's uh, tough on dieters because people uh, may feel the urge to indulge in rich or sweet foods, with the caution against eating or drinking too much under this influence. This also applies to, to shopping, uh, as uh, Venus is, is about money. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, having the uh, tendency to overspend on non-essentials during this transit. Uh, June 5th is, one, is five, eek, or wind, uh, which is about empowerment through communication in the Mayan Soul King calendar. The six is six Akbal or night, which is about being in the flow through contemplating the stars. And at this point, the sun is conjunct Venus. So there, 
uh, both at the same degree of Gemini. Uh, this is wonderful uh, for self-expression in a relationship, and uh, it brings a certain amount of assertiveness to gain the attention of those we love. Uh, this is a good time to socialize and make new contacts, friends, even with the possibility of a new love interest. Uh, it's also favorable for financial activities. Just avoid being extravagant and self-indulgent. The, the negative of this is some people will think that they are the most fascinating and interesting person in the world, which others will interpret as just being a vain fool. Uh, June 7th is seven con or seed or lizard uh, in the Mayan Zolkin calendar, which is about reflection through planting seeds and making new uh, connections. The eighth is H Chan or Serpent, which is about balance uh, through uh, being flexible. And then June 9th is Nine Kimi or Transformation. Uh, patience experience through releasing what no longer serves us. And we have uh, Mercury in opposition to Mars. So Mercury and Mars are at the very late degrees of Taurus and Scorpio. Um, and so this is a time to use caution uh, because of the influence uh, of aggressive and irritable Mars on our speech and behavior, Mercury, which can be very uh, forthright where folks tell each other exactly what they think of them uh, with little or no editing or filtering. Uh, people can be very combative in word and action under this influence, uh, being conscious of, of what you are projecting onto your environment is one way to avoid conflicts and the other and of course the other is to realize others may not be acting as consciously and treat them with compassion and forgiveness ultimately this transit uh, is about releasing ego energies that aren't usually aren't usually so obvious uh, you might want to keep uh, your opinions to yourself if you wish uh, to avoid arguments. Uh, also, avoiding rash or impulsive behaviors is recommended as this energetic is also associated with accidents. Also on the ninth, Mercury sextiles Chiron. And this is harmonious energy for uh, reaching deeper, a deeper understanding of our and, and healing our old wounds, uh, which will eventually grow into wisdom. And people are much uh, might be communicating about their healing process by expressing their wounds uh, from the past and being aware uh, that these past experiences uh, allows them uh, through talking to, to now become conscious and ready to release the, the, those those wounds. Uh, also on the ninth, Mars trines Chiron, uh, and this is supportive for taking action to heal our wounds, especially those related to sex and aggression, represented by Mars. Uh, it could also bring courage to release the, uh, the past through forgiveness. The tenth is ten manik, or dear manifestation, uh, through being of service to others in the Mayan Zolkin calendar. June 11th is 11 Lamat, or star, or rabbit, uh, resolution uh, through being grateful for abundant relationships. And the 12th is 12 Maluk, or offering, understanding through appreciating all of creation. And at this point, we have Mercury moving into Gemini. Um, which is beneficial because Mercury rules Gemini. This is very, fa uh, very fast energy that will speed up communication and interest in a wider variety of topics for the rest of the month. Uh, while in Gemini, uh, Mercury uh, brings uh, spontaneity and socialization in life. Uh, also on the 12th, we have uh, Venus in a sextile to Uranus. So from our perspective here on the Earth, Venus is forming a 60 degree angle with Uranus, which uh, for a day people will seek excitement outside of their daily routines. It stimulates new uh, interactions with people who can fascinate us. But be aware that romance has begun under this transit. Uh, may not be uh, long lasting, even though at the time they seem pleasantly electrifying. It's great energy for a fling with friends or a party. Uh, folks are, are more free, freedom seeking 
uh, in their relationships during this transit. So this doesn't favor being clingy, possessive, or jealous. Allow loved ones more leeway and flexibility, and this could, could uh, greatly broaden your understanding of partners and friends, and in doing so, bring new insight to yourself. June 13th is 13th Auk, or dog, which is about movement to the next stage through enjoying family and friends. And at this point, Neptune turns retrograde, which brings spirituality and creativity, but also delusions as the Lord of the Seas is at the peak of his power in, uh, the, uh, in the sign Pisces, which he rules. Neptune pushes us to transcend the physical world and to connect with our higher purpose and spiritual transformation, but it also encourages escapism as some will seek to be unconscious while others to awaken. If you have planets uh, at 11 to 13 degrees, Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, or Pisces, Neptune it, being in a virtual standstill at 12 degrees uh, during this report period can bring confusion, inspiration, and sanity, feeling drained, a longing to escape any or any combination of these uh, during its months of fog. Also on the 13th, uh, Venus squares Chiron, uh, which makes us aware of our wounds uh, and old uh, old emotions regarding how we relate to others and or uh, what we value. Uh, it may make us more conscious uh, through our current interactions in our personal relationship. Uh, to allow healing of a pattern that we may have forgotten. So no matter what energies are affecting you during this one flint tracena, take some time to be in the flow of the planet by uh, being in nature, watching a sunrise or a sunset, communing with the stars, being conscious of the moment through introspection, uh, meditation, or being truly uh, present with somebody you love. Every day is a blessing, no matter what dramas beckon to distract us. And we're all here just giving the performance of a lifetime on this world stage. Just take some time to observe your play as well as act your part. Remember, you're a spiritual being that's having a human experience. I want to thank you for checking out New World Birth. The next segment of the care and feeding of a New World Age uh, will be for June 14th for a one shuin or monkey uh, with Venus entering Cancer, the second uh, Sagittarius full moon, the solstice with the sun entering Cancer, and Chiron turning retrograde. Uh, you can check us out on Facebook, YouTube, and the Mayan Magics website as there's New World Birth Presences and all those places. And I encourage you to share this information as videos or as text as widely as you choose. And as always, I invite you to contact me at newworldbirth at yahoo.com if you have any questions or you wish to schedule a reading. And I am providing readings and do wish to make this service available for the greatest amount of folks. So I've created three options with three levels of compensation. And if you've been thinking about getting a reading, please contact me. I would love to provide you a reading during these uncertain times. You'll need to be able to either call me in Maine in the USA or we can connect with Skype to receive your reading. We're also accepting donations to keep these reports freely available. And again, contacting me at newworldbirth at yahoo.com is the way to get instructions on uh, how to get uh, make a donation. Or again, as I've said before, getting a reading is a great way to support us. Uh, and, you know, just putting it out there, things have been very lean lately and uh, to the point where we're looking at, uh, you know, what services we're going to continue to offer, what of these reports are going to uh, continue to be offered, um, you know, things of that nature uh, as uh, kind of have to do something to make sure uh, that the bills are getting paid here. Um so anyway, if you uh, are, are enjoying uh, what uh, we've been offering here, uh, uh, please, uh, you know, think of consider making a donation or consider getting a reading. Great way to support us and also get something of great value to yourself. As always, I'm blessed that you've taken the time to connect with my passion for these ancient mysteries, their application to our journey during this incarnation. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste in Lakesh and look forward to connecting with you in the future, uh, either in a future report or reading 
or um, if you got a question, all my best to everybody.